And we're making a video. Hello. Hello. Hey, it's a short. It's only 23 moves. Yeah, this is a shorter game. It is a game... 1929, Martin Luther King Jr. time. <laughs> yeah. From his birthday, I guess. Mm, January? Um, so this was a game that was played in a famous tournament, the Carlsbad Tournament in 1929. Oh. And the player playing black is a very famous player. The player is Aaron Nimzovich, um, who has his name on a lot of openings, most N notably Nimzo the Nimzo Indian. Indian. Um, and we'll see the Nimzo Indian in this game. So this is another game where the guy plays the na opening named after him. Um, so the theme of this game is weak pawns, weak squares, and mighty, mighty knights. So Sharon has says in the beginning that it's amazing how instructive this game is, even though it's short, that Nimzovich attacks a doubled pawn, which weakens an important square. And on that weak square, Nimzovich puts a knight where it can't be dislodged, where it's very securely defended. He okay. opens a file for his rook, and then he switches the knight over to the center, and the knight is devastating, causing Madison to resign, even though he hasn't lost any material yet. So let's see what happens. d4, knight of 6, c4, e6, knight c3, and bishop b4. So this is the start of the Nimzo Indian. So Black's idea is that he's pinning this knight, and in a lot of lines he will give up his bishop, even though a bishop is usually a little bit better than a knight on an open board, he will often give up this bishop to double white's pawns. Not always, but sometimes. Knight f3, and bishop takes c3 check. I don't think bishop takes c3 check right away is really a move, but this was very, hold on, this was very early days of this opening. And so he's showing his idea right away. He's giving up the bishop voluntarily to weaken white's pawns. Dad, yeah. Can I show something? So, let's say I would, if, if this happens in one of my games, let's say d5 happens, I would, I would probably go e3 to have this pawn defended, maybe one, and then maybe one day castle. Yeah, e3 would be a, a normal move, um, defending your pawn and setting up a big mass of pawns in the center. Mm -hmm. um, and e3 is common in the Nimzo Indian. So Sharon makes one comment about this position, about the trade. Um, he says basically that there are good things for... Um, for both sides because white has the two bishops um, and he also has an open file that he can use for his rook um, but black has made a weak pawn so basically this exchange imbalances the game There's something good about it for white something good about it for black so he continues developing with d6 queen c2 and queen e7 um, he's ready to play e5 if white plays e4. This is black's idea. He's fighting for the center. So white plays bishop a3. Um, the first idea of this move is, yeah, it prevents e5 because there's a pin on this pawn now. Yeah. So if e5 happens, then d takes e5 is a problem. Uh, wait a minute. What up? Oh, wait, did you know? So let me, this knight is going to get attacked. And this pawn is going to get taken. Yeah, well, this is just terrible for um, for Black now. He's just lost a free pawn, and his queen's getting attacked, and everything, everything is bad. Um, the other idea of bishop a3 is to prepare a pawn to c5, getting rid of his doubled pawn. Right, doubled pawns are generally bad, so if you can trade one doubled pawn off, you don't have double pawns anymore, and that's good. Yeah. So that's one other idea of bishop a3. C5. So... He plays c5, which is a good move. It's stopping white's idea, and this pawn is now stuck on c4. And later, it's going to get attacked there. All right, so he plays g3. What's his idea? What does he play g3? No, tell me. Tell me with your words. He's going to do bishop d2 in castle. Yeah, exactly. He wants to fianchetto his bishop. Um, although, uh, in the book, they criticize this and say that he should have played e4 and then bishop d3. All right, so b6, he is, mm -hmm. hold on, hold on, hold on. Black's getting ready to get on the long diagonal as well. Bishop g2, bishop b7, so he's fighting for this diagonal. Castles, castles, 
and knight to h4. Um, he says white really wants to exchange bishops since this bishop is has got more scope and the bishop and the knight are working together to look at the e4 square. Um, but yeah, this is a little bit um, passive, this move. Like sometimes if you just try to make trades and that's all you're trying to do, you can fall behind on time and get in trouble. And that's maybe going to happen to... Me? To black here. Um, I mean, to uh, to white. So he, yeah, he plays king takes g2, which is weak because then it leaves the knight here on this bad square and it exposes his king. And knights with any... Hold on, hold on, hold on. So he says in the book that he should and play knight takes g2. Knight, knights on the h and a file are not very good. Yes. There's a saying, a knight on the rim is dim, or yeah. a knight on the rim is grim. Yeah. There's like a rhyme about that. And yeah, in general, knights suck on the side of the board. Not always. Um, if, if, if a knight went there, then... Okay, and he says white is not doing too bad here. Right. Queen b7. Queen b7 plus after king takes. Yeah, so queen b7 check. Um, okay, he says this is bad. Yeah, so knight to f3 definitely makes more sense. Bringing the knight back into the game. Um... And he says this loses a piece. Is that true? Oh wow! Yes, it does. Okay, so how does um, white win? A, <coughs> how does black win a piece? Is black to play and win? Um. Oh my! Tell me the move instead of making it. Tell me the move. G five. G five. What about queen d two? G five. Queen d two. Yeah. Just take the money. Queen g5 check? What do you do? Um, King g. Queen takes f6 check. You're not up a piece anymore. I'm oh, also going to take your h1. Shoot. So let's backtrack. So g5, queen d2. Let's find a better defense. H5, h6. Okay, very good. h6 controls the g5 square, and next you're going to take on h4. This is one of those things where we have to calculate their threats. Yeah, but this is how we how we win um, win the piece after after f3. Alright, so in the game he plays king g1. Um, hold on, I got it. Um, queen to a6. Okay, so what is black's threat? Take the c4 pawn. Yeah, I simply threaten you to take this weak pawn. So white plays queen b3. Knight c6. Yeah, knight c6, and now the knight is coming to uh, Buck fork. Buck one could work. Okay, so he gives two lines here for alternatives. Uh, d takes c5. Oops, after knight c6. Um, he says that he can play d takes c5, b takes c5, and black is threatening... This Daddy, oh no we, we a, forgot we B8. forgot to say the name of the book which is winning the bishop yeah. what's the name of the book the most instructive games of chess I've ever played and yeah. there's there's sixty two games in that book that's correct um and tonight to Yeah, okay. So yeah, basically black is a good bishop here. He's threatening rook a to b8, and also knight e5 is coming, picking up the c1. This is good for uh, good for black. And the other line that he gives is knight to f3, knight a5. So here the knight is not so bad on the side of the board because it's attacking something. It's attacking a weak pawn. Um, queen b5, six takes, knight c4. The knight is very good here, attacking this bishop. So we have to go bishop c1. And oh, knight to d5. And look how good these knights are. So the knight's attacking this um, this pawn, and this knight's dominating this bishop. The bishop can't come to either of these two squares to defend the pawn because wait, what the about, knight is controlling them. Oh, wait, no. It's a, wait, Tell me the move with your words. Tell me I was words. thinking about bishop d2, but knight takes, knight takes, and then take pawn. Exactly. And I'm even going to win another pawn here. So you see how good Black's Knights are in this position. Um, 
All right, so rook after d1 was played, and knight a5. A very strong move. And in this kind of structure, this is like a really typical idea, where the knight and queen um, gang up on this pawn really well. All right, queen b5. We're going to see something similar to that last line. Takes, takes. And what do you think black should play here and why? What should black play here and why? Nope, tell me the move. Why can't I use the mouse? Because I want you to think in your head, not with your hands. I can. Knight c4, because then the bishop has to move and white's losing time. Okay, that's... Um, that's, what, that's what we played. Yeah, that's what he played. So there's a lot of um, good aspects of knight c4. So he gives a big, long paragraph of why knight c4 is so good. Definitely one nice aspect of it is that this the bishop, bishop has to run away, and the bishop doesn't have a lot of squares. Um, but here's what he says about why this move is so good. Number one, the knight is posted aggressively. It attacks the bishop and drives it back to its starting square. So it's not even just that it's attacking it. The bishop is almost out of squares. So it has to go back to c1, where it is not very good. Number two, the knight is posted defensively because it protects d6. Um, and it also protects um, the knight pawn against possible attack. Well, I mean, okay, that's true. Okay. It's defending both of these pawns. Um, yeah, the knight's influencing the center. It's attacking e5. Um, and also, yeah, this is the important thing, is that the knight can't um, be driven away, right? Like, how could white imagine, try to imagine white ever attacking this knight? How would he do it? Like, give white, like, three moves. You can't even, it's very hard to organize an attack on the knight. Wait, you can never uh, really attack the knight with pawns. Well, with fox, it's easy, but... The other nice thing about this knight here, which he doesn't mention, is that the knight is blockading this pawn, and this pawn is on a dark square. Um, so this pawn is 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 weak, and it's also blocking black's uh, white's bishop. So the knight is kind of like crippling white's position here. So bishop c1. A6? Yeah, a6 is a, whoops. Ah! <laughs> a6 <laughs> is a very nice move. Why do you think he played a6? Well, what's to, the point of this move? To get that B5 pawn. Well, I'm, he doesn't just have to have to give it, right? He can, know, he can trade it. So that's not quite the idea. To trade, that's, to trade? That. Basically, he already improved his position a lot on the queen side. Now he's improving it even more by opening up his rook. On the king side. On the queen side. He's, he's opening up the A file for his oh, rook. I because thought, I thought this was the queen side and that was the king side. White's going to have to take this pawn and then the rook's going to come alive. What happens if rook b1? What do we do on rook b1? On rook b1? Yeah, if white plays rook b1 right now, what are we going to do? Um, oh, wait, ah. Rook b1... Do. After rook b1, you have a way to win material. You need to look at your forcing moves after rook b1. Okay, what 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 piece of black's moves it? That's too much of a hint. Oh come on! No, after rook b1, look at your attacks and captures. Oh, attack and captures? There really is no captures. Well, there's only one capture. Okay, what's the capture? Be um take the. Take the um, B5 one. Okay, what will white do then? Book takes. And then what can you do? I have one material made in one. Uh, material in one. How? Um. So rook B1, A takes B5, rook takes B5, then what? Knight A3? No, you can take something right away. Try to make sure you're looking at the position clearly. Rook B1. Right away? Rook B1, A takes B5, rook takes B5. You can win material Rook right takes away. a two. Yeah, Rook takes a two. So see, this is how we can see things just by looking at the uh, looking at the captures in this position. Well, there was C takes D four to look at, but the captures that stand out are 
A takes B5, opening up this yeah. this rook on the A file, and then rook takes A2, which is good. Oh, no, no, no. Um, so that's the idea there. So b takes a6 is basically kind of forced, but now after mm -hmm. rook takes a6, our rook is looking at a so d takes, new and weak target. He takes. Um, yeah, let's see. He takes. B takes. B, B, B takes. Yeah, b takes c5. Makes sense. Knight g2. Okay, so he's trying to get his knight back into the game, but it's going to be too slow. He says the knight returns, but it's late in the day. That's true. Knight to d5. The knight is attacking this Look pawn. To, to d3 to defend. So here he makes a last comment. A comparison of the position shows the superiority of blacks in that his knights are strongly centralized and his rooks can operate on the two open files. Yeah, this is a good point. Um, like, basically, this might not be so obvious, but everything about white's position is terrible <laughs> and yeah. everything about black's position is good. Like, white hasn't lost any material yet, Wait, but Daddy. this these knights are attacking everything. Hold these rooks Wait, are terrorizing everything. Daddy. And meanwhile, Daddy. white, hold on. White's position, like, none of his pieces are doing anything. Like, literally not one of white's pieces is doing a single thing. This is on its starting square. This is on its starting square. This knight is doing absolutely nothing here in the corner. This rook is just looking at a totally defended knight. <laughs> Wait, Daddy, Daddy, no. That so this position is just something. terrible for Daddy. white. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's keep looking. Look at three, look at eight, look at eight. Yeah, so he's simply uh, attacking a2 again. e4, and then knight e5. And then white resigns. Okay, why do white resign here? Because the looks uh, is not checked. Nope. It has a couple of squares. It's not immediately trapped anyway. Well, it can't go rook d2. That's okay, it. good job. So let's try to calculate what should happen here. Rook d1. What are you going to play with black? Um, rook takes a2. Uh, your knight's hanging. So if rook d1, rook takes a2, oh, I'm going to... Oh, knight takes c3. Yeah, knight takes c3 will save your knight and attack something new. Okay, okay. Um, so let's say rook f1. Which is his only move to not get forked immediately, actually, after rook f1, knight takes c3. Um, he has to watch out for this knight f3 check fork, so he plays rook f1. Knight e2? King h1? Uh, I don't know, this is tricky. Well, you've already won one pawn in that position. Let's start looking at this on the board now. Rook d1, knight takes c3. Rook f1. Look, knight f3 check. Right? Well, that check is just a check. Oh, yeah. Why do you need to play look, it? Rook takes, look, takes a2. Yeah, rook takes a2 is the move that does something, right? It takes another free pawn, and um, it, like, continues getting into his position. So rook takes. Rook takes, and then rook takes, look. And white must lose a third pawn? What the heck? Yeah, he says um, that uh, after this check, king h1 and takes, white's losing a third pawn. He's losing his e4 pawn. Mm -hmm. His e pawn can't be defended okay, anymore. Okay. But, 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 but also look how bad this uh, this rook still is at the end. It can't go to any squares because they're all defended by the knight. So this was an interesting game. What did we learn from this game? It was a nice, short game. What did we learn from this? Get your pieces activated. Yeah, so that was why uh, White lost here, basically. Like, his pieces didn't have anything to do, and all of Black's pieces were good. What else did we learn? Daddy, let's play Blitz. Hold on, hold on. What else did we learn? This knight on c4 um, was a knight on an outpost square. And that means a square in, the, in your opponent's position. Um, let's go to the position after knight c4. It's a square in your opponent's position where um, your piece controls a lot of important squares, and it can't be kicked away. And outposts, yeah. outpost squares can be very, very strong. We'll see more outpost squares in this book. All right. So we are going to end this video. It's a nice, well, short video. we're going to do another video. video. And we can do a little blitz after this. Um, what do we say to our viewers? Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.